All right. Uh, call order the uh, Wednesday, April 15th, combined council meeting and committee meeting. First on the agenda is Mr. Amrine with public safety. COVID-19, Joan Seidel. See, before, before we jump in, Joan, I just want to uh, make sure everybody is, is sort of aware that obviously this is a team effort, um, this COVID stuff, and, uh, and you're part of the team too. We appreciate support of council, but Joan has got a great cast of characters behind her, beside her, sometimes in front of her even, but um, she's a wonderful lead staff person on this and and you'll see that and you've probably heard that as roger already mentioned uh, she did a fantastic job in rotary she's just a great ambassador I, i'm sure she'd rather be ambassador for more positive things than uh, covid but the reality is uh, it's what we're all dealing with um she has a calmness an expertise that she brings to the table that i can tell you is is hugely helpful as you might imagine it's something as long as this is turning out to be and as potentially scary as this could be. Those attributes that she brings to the table are just terrific. So um, I didn't want her just to jump in. I wanted to give her a little bit of an intro there because really extreme gratefulness on, every, on, you know, on behalf of the whole staff. Uh, I'm sure you'll get a feel for that by the time she's done with the presentation. So I'll stop and Joan, the, the floor is yours. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. I just lost the whole screen, so I'm not sure where everyone went. Um, I just see, I see you there now, you Joan. Okay, all right. Phew. And I'll be resharing my, I'll be, sorry, I'll be resharing my screen. Okay. So there you go. There we are. Okay. So I'll try to get right to it. And th thank you, um, Mr. Roller, for that very kind introduction. And really, it is true. I can only do what I do because everybody else that's on the unified command team and everyone from the city is supporting me so much that I have the ability to do the small bit that I, that I am doing for our city. But I did want to give an update. Let's see if I can advance. Joan, if you want to advance, just let me know. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we can go to the next slide then. And this uh, this is right from the Ohio Department of Health website at uh, coronavirus.ohio.gov. Uh, and it shows that we have um, over 7,000 cases in our state right now, 361 deaths. Um, and you can see the darker the blue uh, by county, the more cases there are. For us in Portage County, there's a total of 158, that's 158 cases, 43 people are currently hospitalized, and 22 have died. Of that number, approximately 17 are from long-term care facilities. In Kent, we have four confirmed cases, and it looks like a possible one that's uh, probable, but is not being tested, but has been told that they meet the definition. So our numbers jumped there for the longest time. We only had that one case and it just seemed like all this effort, what are, you know, for what, uh, but our cases jumped and I was glad that we had put all that effort into planning and preparation. So um, we may see additional cases because of the holiday weekend. Um, people may have gotten together for Easter, even though there was that stay at home order that's been in place for some time now. Uh, so we're looking based on how long it takes to transmit and how long it takes for symptoms appear and how long it takes to get testing done. In the next two weeks, we'll see if, if the Easter holiday weekend is going to bump our numbers at all. But right now, um, Portage County is at a 4% daily growth rate in terms of new cases. So uh, we'll, we'll see how that impacts in a couple of slides. But if we can go to the next slide, then it just has some of the details of what we're doing. Uh, so certainly holding this unified command team meeting. And again, this is just a more seamless way that we can work as a city. It, it helps strengthen our efforts. It, it keeps us from duplicating efforts and it really helps in terms of communication, which is so important. Um, after the unified command team, which is um, comprised of uh, Dave Roller, myself, Chief Tosco and Chief Lee, then the next level is the general command staff. And with that is planning, logistics, 
um, operations and finance. And that's really where a lot of the legwork gets done. All the important work happens in those meetings. And so we do try, I do try to attend those meetings as well to, to keep in touch and see if they're having any barriers or any questions. We're putting out a lot of education on social media. Uh, hopefully you have seen the posts that have come from police, fire, as well as our own department. I know that our website and Facebook and Twitter feeds have really increased in terms of membership. People are sharing what we're putting out there. So I believe the education um, that all three of those departments are doing is really addressing some needs out in the community. I'm, we're doing a lot of monitoring and checking on concerns over the essential businesses and then uh, compliance with safe business practices. So for those businesses that the governor has said uh, are essential and should keep operating, we want to make sure that they're doing safe distancing, that they have lenient policies in terms of, uh, you know, call offs for sick employees and that they have good access to hand hygiene. And we are getting a fair amount of those uh, concerns coming into us. So the sanitarians have kind of shifted their focus from housing and um, all, all their other inspections that they do, food inspections, tattoo inspections, pool inspections, and we're really focusing on monitoring and checking these essential businesses and their compliance. Uh, early on, we did a lot of strategizing for the safety of our first responders because we knew they would be on the front line and we wouldn't necessarily know for them which patients might be positive. And especially now that people seem to be able to spread COVID-19 uh, in a pre-symptomatic or in an asymptomatic way, uh, we really wanted to make sure that they were safe. And so um, optimizing the use of uh, PPE, personal protective equipment has been so important. And of course they're pros at that, but we wanted to make sure, so a lot of training and education and making sure that um, we're following the CDC guidelines. Now uh, PPE is to be reused. So then N95 respirators are not thrown away after each use, they're actually saved. So our board of health president who is a microbiologist has been kind of integral and he's been on the unified command as well and has been really helping in terms of setting up a, a good practice for reusing these masks and reusing them in a safe way. I've been to uh, local nursing homes and talked with staff and management there about um, their use of their PPE, because if they're using their PPE correctly, hopefully their patients won't be getting ill, and then our first responders won't have to go into those facilities to transport. We've also done some uh, providing of PPE to these nursing homes as well, uh, so that they have what they need to keep their staff safe and, and free from illness. We also wanted to look at some vulnerable populations. We know the nursing home is a target, but also uh, those 55 and older. And so we have a number of those facilities in Kent uh, that kind of cater to the 55 and older group. And we're working very diligently to make sure that they have, have plans in place. And we were really pleasantly surprised when we reached out and had those conversations uh, that they did have some very robust plans in place to take care of their residents. But the other thing we are uh, now working on our in and out strategy. So in case there does happen to be a case or two that needs to be transported, that our first responders will have very limited time in, they'll get in, do what they need to do. If they need to transport uh, that, that resident to a hospital, they'll be able to do it in the quickest possible manner. So again, we're just trying to make everything as safe and efficient as possible. And it does take a lot of planning. Uh, so I think the next slide kind of looks at the vulnerable populations in terms of age group and who's getting uh, hospitalized. And this is a graph that comes from the CDC and you can kind of see how, um, it's not quite by decades, but the older, the older we are, the more at risk we are uh, to need hospitalization if we would acquire uh, COVID-19. And so that's why this focus on vulnerable populations is so important to identify those groups in nursing homes in over 55 communities to make sure that they have in place um, all of those strategies that are gonna help give them the best chance um, to stay healthy during this event. So I think the next slide then should talk about, um, let's see. Okay, a little bit more about what we're doing. So a lot of meetings, and again, all these meetings are usually done uh, either by Zoom or by some type of conference call. 
Uh, I meet every morning with our staff and we go through what our day is supposed to look like. Sometimes that changes. Uh, if there was any problems with the last 24 hours and then we try to give a look ahead to the next 24 hours, what we might need to be doing. And then uh, right immediately after that, we have a telephone call with Portage County Health District. It also includes UH Portage Medical Center. It includes Hattie Larlam and it includes the Portage County Emergency Management Agency. And again, and um, we go through our command team and we all um, share what we're working on, what barriers we've had and what we hope to be doing. So it's nice because we can have some continuity in this way and we can look and see, well, what are they doing that we might need to implement and vice versa. We're also um, have, I think now they actually moved to Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So we have a separate call with the Emer emergency management agency uh, as well, where that way we get to see countywide what all the different agencies are working on. Uh, I've been meeting once a month with KSU because even though the students are gone, they're still planning and preparations that they have to make. So the health department is, is a part of that because they're in our jurisdiction. Uh, there's been several meetings with the Akron Regional Hospital Association that involves leaders from the hospital, but also from long-term care as well as health commissioners and different health districts. And so they're looking at how can we work together to do contact tracing, to find out who's ill in our community community, who should be quarantined, who should be in isolation, because as um, Mr. Roller alluded, this is, this is not over with yet. And so there's a lot more work that's left to be done. And we're trying to organize that in such a way that it, no one agency bears all the burden and that we can work together and learn from each other. Three times a week, sometimes on the weekends as well, the Ohio Department of Health has a COVID-19 call where they, it's about an hour long call and uh, they go through all the different uh, components of the health department, uh, whether it's legal or whether it's uh, communications or infectious disease or preparedness and talk about what we should be looking at. So they kind of give us some directives. And then um, again, so some Zoom meetings with city organizations like the Rotary Club and the Lions Club have been very nice in terms of inviting me to give me uh, to give updates uh, to their groups. And so it's it's great to have that that opportunity to connect with people. And again, we're just kind of going back to the basics and fundamentals, encouraging social distancing, um, mask wearing, which is also known as source control and as well as all the other previous safety measures um, that, that uh, Governor DeWine and Dr. Acton have been speaking so eloquently about. So I just wanted to take a look then at the next slide. And I believe that will be a graph from 329. And again, you have probably heard a lot about the different modeling that they have used to try to project what could we expect? And so as of 329, they felt that the peak would probably fall around um, April, I'm going to say that's probably around April 25th or so, and that there would be a projection of 10,000 cases a day in the state of Ohio, which would be huge. Uh, so thankfully, we, we are not in the yellow part of the curve. Uh, we have missed that because of all the uh, interventions um, that Governor DeWine and Dr. Acton have put into place. And now we can see where we are based on that. And the next slide will show where we were. I believe um, this was put out last week. Week. And you will see, I think, a very dramatic difference. And when you hear that term flattening the curve, you can see how that has really been squashed. And around April 18th, we're hoping to see the peak in our cases. And that uh, was projected to be at 2,000 cases a day, which we are not uh, we are not quite at. And when I said that in Portage County, we're seeing a 4% increase daily that would lower that projected peak uh, even further. Two weeks ago, our daily um, percent increase was around 22 to 23%. So we were seeing many more cases um, as a result of that. So everything that we have done has had a huge positive effect in terms of numbers of people who, who could have been ill, uh, very seriously ill. I know it's had a great impact on our economy, um, but to limit those numbers of cases and protect uh, healthcare workers and protect the healthcare system from being overwhelmed uh, was really vital. So everything we've done has been working. As Dr. Acton said, we've won the first round of the battle, but the war is ongoing. So we need to continue uh, because what we've done is really made an impact. 
And I believe that that is my last slide. So I don't know if anyone has any questions. Questions, I've unmuted everybody. Um, John? Yes. The This coronavirus is, does anybody know like if it was not transmitted to someone else, what would be its life to stay alive? Well, it would, I would have a hard time staying alive if it, if it wasn't, if it didn't have the ability to be transmitted to others. It can't, it's not, a, viruses are technically not alive. They need a use. <coughs> so that's why they usually have some effective means of spreading from person to person, because when they infect another person, then they can use that person's um, DNA to replicate themselves and then the virus can continue living and can continue spreading. So it, that's why keeping people apart for 14 days at least or longer can help prevent the spread because you're not having that interaction and the virus doesn't have a chance to spread from one person to another. So, so it has to have a host to spread. And if it doesn't have a host, we'll just will it continue to duplicate no, it can't. It needs, it needs, it's an, a single stranded RNA virus. It needs the DNA of a living human being. So it kind of overtakes your cells function and it all that all your the human host cell will do is replicate more virus. So, so if it's, if it's in a host already, does it keep duplicating or well, at some point in time, the patient, you know, either develops an infection. They could be, they could remain asymptomatic because we've we've seen that happen. They could develop an active infection, and then they could, you know, eighty percent of people tend to get over that with mild to moderate symptoms, or they could progress on to more serious uh, conditions and need hospitalization. So either of those three things could happen. But does the virus then die or? Yeah, yeah. I mean, once your the body's immune system is either able to overwhelm it, then it, yeah, it would die off. But I've heard that people tend to remain uh, able to shed virus for many days uh, and possibly up to weeks after they've recovered. So that's that's quite concerning. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Anything? Uh, Joan, I think you did a nice job. I'll see you at Lions Club tomorrow. Okay, you will, bright and early. Okay, thank you. Thank right. you. Thanks again Before, for your time. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, Joan, Robin has a question. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. I, I, I apologize. Joan, um, I had spoken to you about the aspect of enforcement and our ability, uh, and you explained uh kind of what we're doing in that regard, but I've been getting a lot of questions because I've been in my house for seven weeks, but uh, we've been getting a lot of questions from people who want to know, they see certain things occurring, uh, they get confused about it, they're wondering uh, ex exactly what we're doing and what our ability is to enforce the uh, uh, the social distancing and uh, the restraint of uh, businesses uh, in their functions of you know what businesses can be open, what businesses can't, and what the timeline uh, might be on that. Yeah. So again, unfortunately, the eight of us that make up the health department can't be everywhere all the time. So we are really complaint driven at this point. Uh, when a concerned citizen or someone from a business has a concern, are we really essential and are we functioning correctly? They can call the health department and we will definitely check into that. Some of the complaints that we have received have actually, there was one complaint about a large gathering that turned out to be a Salvation Army and a National Guard um, food drive. So it was actually a sanctioned event. But again, you know, somebody was concerned, didn't know if it was legitimate and, and took the time to make that call. So we do depend a lot on that. Although anytime we happen to be out and about, we'll try to go by parks, we'll try to go by playgrounds. Uh, we stop into businesses. Uh, since our caseload has been a little bit lighter than some surrounding areas, uh, we've been considering going back in and doing more food inspections since we want to make sure that we don't have uh, a foodborne pathogen outbreak on top of this uh, while people are still 
allowed to you know get carry out uh, from from restaurants and we want to continue to support that uh, so that businesses are not as as uh, as impacted as greatly that and the, the point enough mr turner the, the, well one, one final uh, uh the issue of uh uh some uh, exclusions from the rule, uh, like church gatherings and so on. I, I, I've gotten people who have, uh, have have an issue with that because they they still see that as you know uh, people uh, congregating and the possibility of the of the uh, COVID nineteen uh, pathogens and everything. Uh, being transmitted then and uh why why is there an exclusion for uh that i i know that there aren't for others but i you had pointed out to me and i did see it that churches are excluded and uh although i talked to the mayor and his you know i i guess uh the catholic churches and everything have gone online and doing virtual meetings, but there are some, quite frankly, they're getting ready to uh, start uh, meeting again. I'm, I'm concerned about that, to be honest with you. I think it's a little too soon to start meeting. Uh, again, that, uh, that, in, that indication was for no more than 10, a group of 10 uh, to congregate. And so we would wanna make sure that we follow those because it's following those type of interventions that have helped keep us where we needed to be and headed in the right direction. So definitely the governor, I think, wants to support everyone's right to practice religious um, you know, beliefs and, and to have those freedoms there. But again, to do it with some common sense in terms of not wanting to spread illness amongst a, a community of, of um, in, in a belief group. So I think that that would be the number one thing that the congregation would want to focus on is the safety of their fellow congregants and uh, not get together during this time if they could not do so safely, whether that's in a, in a drive up area. I know some places have been meeting in large parking lots like where they have um, you know, drive in movie theaters and they can project up on the screen. Not every church has that ability, you know, to rent a place like that or to move virtually or to do a drive through where uh, the pastor kind of meets at a socially acceptable distance one on one with each car. So I guess there's some alternatives there. And those are some examples of what the state of Ohio is supporting in terms of alternatives to meeting uh, inside, I guess, the usual church uh, or congregation setting. Hey, hey, Robin, this is Dave. I, Thank I just, you. I, I just want to add to that, that please know that the exceptions that you're referring to come from the state. And yeah. so the lists come from the state, the guidance come from the state. The question then becomes kind of who, who enforces that locally. And, you know, as we're, as Joan mentioned, it's still the relative risk compared to a lot of places is less. And so it's still done in a, in a mostly sort of friendly educational awareness manner. But please know that, as Joan also mentioned, there's a lot of planning going on. And, and in many of our discussions, we've talked about, well, if, if something turned bad on this and, and we were seeing the kind of numbers that some of these big cities, well, there's a whole range of new tactics that would probably be employed in that scenario. And we continuously monitor what other cities are doing. I, I think I drive the police nuts because I'm always sending them articles from other cities that say, hey, this city has adopted a curfew. This city has gone to different kind of controls that I think right now would, would, would smack of overreaction, I think. Uh, and I'm not even sure. We have a lot of discussions, as you might imagine, with Hope Jones on this too, because she talks about what we legally, what we statutorily can enforce or can't enforce. So please know that we think about all the points that you're talking about every day. And we, we constantly are kind of gauging where we're at in terms of the risk exposure locally. And we try to match that because remember we're in essence, this whole thing is about reducing people's rights. And so we're very careful and we try to balance public safety with individual rights. I, I so far, I, I mean, we, it's a work in progress, uh, but so far it seems to be working well, I, I uh, thank you, uh, Dave. I, and I wanted to commend you guys are doing an, uh, just a tremendous job. I'm very proud of you. 
And uh, but I those are questions that will come to us uh, when people don't know this is a new situation. And uh, there are a lot of unknowns out there. People just don't know how to react and respond. They come to us. I don't know what the hell is going on. I haven't been out of the house in in, in a month and a half. Uh, so it, it's interesting to get those things posed and being able to, in the future, uh, respond in, a, I think, a much more uh, educated manner about it. But thank you so much for the job you're doing and the job Joan's doing. Outstanding. Thank, thank you very much. So I guess I'll just say, I hope all of you stay well and stay healthy and let me know if there's anything I can help you with. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks, Joan. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Okay. The second thing on the um, public safety uh, committee is parks and rec request to authorize alcohol at the 2020 art in the park event. Yeah, and I, I'll go ahead and lead in, although I think Kevin is on the call. So um, this is actually something, I guess, after that sobering report from Joan, maybe alcohol is appropriate at this point. Um, <laughs> we are, before all this hit, you know, Kevin, I think, and his staff kind of drew the conclusion that their venue, the Art in the Park, is a good venue but it could be even better with perhaps wine and using featuring some local wineries. You know, we've had a lot of success with the downtown wine festival. So I think all of that was sort of in the works. It, it almost seems out of place to talk about it now because we don't really know what will happen in September if he'll even be able to have it. But in the spirit of hope uh, and hoping that things will turn around, uh, he's asking for your authorization to allow alcohol, wine, I think, to be served in the park over the uh, uh, September, I forget, 6th or 7th, right around there, uh, the, the weekend event that they have. So, Kevin, I, is that, did I cover it? Yes, uh, I think that it's uh, not till later in September, and it's just wine, uh, not alcohol. And I realize my uh, photo is not up there, but you might be better off without my photo being up there. But uh, I think it also, the reason we needed some authorization from council is we do have to we have to apply for a permit, uh, an F two permit to do this. Any, any questions from council? Anybody from the audience? <laughs> Back to council. Who's Back authorized with the emergency? I'll second that. Okay. okay. Comments? No. All those. Not the love. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, passes. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Jack. We're going to move into streets and sidewalks. Uh, Mr. Sedoti. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we have one item on the agenda tonight, a proposed license agreement for an outdoor patio at Barrios. And I believe Mr. Bowling is going to uh, yep. discuss that. Yeah, again, this is, uh, well, uh, we're going to, assume that we're gonna have a recovery here and there's gonna be uh, reasons to celebrate at some point in the future. And certainly you've seen yourselves over the last uh, year, a couple of years, more and more places have found that the outdoor dining opportunities really are popular with customers. And uh, so far we've been able to do it such that it really doesn't impede you know, the pedestrian way and, and uh, allows customers to enjoy the, the sunshine when it is indeed sunny out and we uh, don't have to worry about social distancing. So Jim, I think, has been working on this. Um, he tends to be the guy that gets calls because of the uh, he's sort of manager of the right of way. So this is essentially a request to uh, allow Barrios to work with Jim to finalize some plans to be able to put some seating, I think, on the outdoor of their, their facility on, on North Water or South Water Street. Jim. Yep, thanks, Dave. Um, like Dave said, um, Barrio actually started working on this last year. And just because it was such a difficult location, it's taken us a little bit of time to find a way to allow some good pedestrian movement while uh, giving them the opportunity to have outdoor dining. But we've been able to do that uh, by some of the stuff that's been done out there. And they're going to have to move some of the street furniture there that's there, but it should add some liveliness to that area. So 
uh, we think it's a great idea and uh, we're requesting your approval for that proposed license agreement with any the emergency because they still want to work on it. Okay. Any questions from council? Hearing no questions from council, uh, do I hear a motion? Move to approve with the emergency. I'll second. Uh, any other comments, John? No. No. Nope. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, same sign. Thank you. That's all we have, Mr. Mayor, in this committee. Okay, thank you, thank Mr. Sadoti. We'll move on to community development, Mr. Kuhar. Yeah, we're on the topic of the renewal of the Haymakers uh, Farm Market, a renewal, lease renewal. Bridget, yes. I believe. Yes, as you recall, yeah, yeah. We're, the, we're the primary lease agent, leaseholder, and then we sublet it to the farmer's market for that uh, space every year. We do it at a nominal $1 fee. Um, as you know, it's one of our most popular outdoor functions um, every Saturday. And I know right now it, it's still it's still going on as a drive through drive by farmers market. And uh, uh, we're anxious. We're hopeful that uh, come summer we'll be able to at some point resume their their space downtown. And this, this renewal will let them do that if, if we can get your approval. So Bridget's here, but it kind of speaks for itself. Yeah. Uh, do we have any questions from council on this issue? I have a question. Garrett? Uh, yeah. Is there uh, any talk of them or us paving the, uh, the, the area there? Because it's pretty treacherous for people to walk around. And when you compare the surrounding uh, farmers markets, uh, you know, it's, it's ours is not, not the most ideal in terms of uh, level ground, especially for older incapacitated people? Usually every year, um, the central maintenance, it's been Brad the last couple of years and Gerald before that, works with them to go out there and level it and, and deal with the, the divots. And that will happen again this year, but there is no plans to pave that area immediately. They may actually be working with Trano to hopefully expand it into that area in case social distancing is needed to open the market in June or July. Um, so that area is paved. So they, they may be using some of that. They're in discussions with them right now. And, and, and Garrett, please know that part of the reason Funny. Come here. we don't have... I'm not on you and you can't see me, but well, see they blocked us off for, um, until we actually have to speak. I have a question. Yeah, Heidi. Can you hear me now? So that's a Dave Roller. That's my boss. Oh, that's the mayor. All right. I'll try to answer quick. Uh, so the uh, it, it's not an inexpensive paving job because when you start paving, you need to deal with drainage. President and council, you know, Bridget yes. gets involved and she hits council, us with all council, kinds of regulations. Council, you know, so but it's, it, it gets expensive. And when we don't know, we have a long term commitment. So in other words, it's hard to justify spending a lot of money unless we knew that, you know, the railroad would continue to allow us to use that, you know, for an extended amount of time. So we do talk about it, but as Bridget said, we usually end up just kind of smoothing it over as best we can for another year. Hey, uh, Heidi? Yeah. I, well, while we're on the topic of needs for the farmer's market, I routinely get a lot of requests for more trash and recycling facilities for Saturdays. And I have noticed myself that you know, I'll walk around for quite some, some distance before I can find something to do with my papers from the, the food truck or, <laughs> and uh, I don't even know if we have any recycling facilities at all down there. So that's just something that has been requested and maybe we could look at. Well, yeah. the, are you speaking specifically like, so the farmer's market needs to add more or are you asking for city to step in and put more? Well, I really don't understand who's who has been emptying the the receptacles and how that's all taken care of. So I really wouldn't know how to rec what to recommend. I think Heidi, one of the issues is that um, oftentimes 
we, we've had this discussion with Andrew on numerous occasions. Many of the participants in the market leave their boxes and the containers that they use, which fills them the cans, and then there is extra pickup. I do know Melanie's on the phone. I'm, Sherry does work with Republic to get those additional cans empty, but maybe I can talk to Andrew about coming up with a method for dealing with some of that so they're not using the public trash cans, kind of like what we do for mm -hmm. events where uh, Main Street brings down the cardboard, temporary ones, maybe we can talk to them and figure out a way to get those for Andrew to use at the market. And then those can be disposed of fairly easily at the end of that Saturday market event. I, I think that might be a good idea. Okay, I'll take care of that. That is, Heidi? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, Roger, you had your hand up? Yeah, Bridget, uh, I was wondering if it would be possible since this is a farmer's market and we do have some wonderful people down there that they have to have some connection to the Ohio Extension Bureau or whatever that's called. You know, it, could there possibly be any kind of grant money out there that would be like a matching that maybe would soften the blow on our limited resources in the city and might be able to do some, you know, if nothing else, chip and seal or something like that out there to get that, you know, get that in a little better shape. Uh, not, not that I'm aware of. And because the railroad owns that land and we lease it, it would actually be, we would be an applicant, but we don't own it. So that would create challenges and issues too. So okay. mm -hmm. that, makes that makes sense. Thank you. Any mm -hmm. more questions? None. Mike, do you have a question? No, I was going to make a motion. Okay. Make a motion. Oh, I'd like to move to approve the farmer's market property lease with Second. the emergency. Second. Did, did we need an emergency with that? You said so. Please. Thank you. Yeah. All in favor of the motion? Aye. All right. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Same sign. Passes. And that concludes uh, community yeah. development. Thank you, Mr. Who are in our finance committee, Mr. DeLeon? Yeah, I'd like to, what is it, uh, to authorize Parks Rec to submit the State of Ohio Nature Works grant. Kevin? Yeah, there. Kevin's here, although I saw his picture a minute ago. Maybe he uh, unplugged his photo, but he's asking for your authorization. Oh, yeah. yeah, there he is, there he is. Uh, <laughs> your authorization to allow him to seek some state funding to do some repair work at uh, some basketball courts. So, Kevin? Yeah, it's the uh, basketball park, uh, Plum Creek Park, heavily used uh, kind of an area that's got a lot of uh, apartment complexes and kind of a low income area. The park is always under heavy use. Strangely, both the things I'm asking for tonight are like, seem like so far in the future of what we're going through today, but we do have to plan ahead. Uh, that grant's due in June. Uh, the state pays 75%, then the parks would match 25%. So it's a it's a good deal, a $30,000 project, and it'll cost the uh, city only $7,500 if we get the grant. Questions from council? Was it Plum Creek? Is there any or questions from Al I'm sorry, yes, it's Al Lease. Okay, all right, Al thank Lease. you. That's, that's what I thought it was. I wanted to make sure I had the right park. Okay, thank good you. Good catch, Glenn. <laughs> Further questions? Nice. Back to council, anybody? I'd Move like to, to approve the emergency. Second. Right. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thanks, Kevin. That's good. Uh, thank you. <laughs> now, the appropriations amendment. Rhonda, you there? I am. Uh, let's see. I'm in the dark. <laughs> oh, there we are. There we, there we are. are. I would like to request council to approve the amended appropriations I submitted to the city manager, Dave Reller, on April 7th. There were only two adjustments to the appropriations, um, but if you had any questions, um, I can answer them now. Questions for Rhonda? Seeing none. Is there anybody? Seeing none, back to... Councils are moved to authorize. Second. With emergency? With an emergency. It's automatic. 
Wow. It's automatic when you. That's right. Um, oh, further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It passes. Thank you, Rhonda. Thank you. That concludes the finance committee also. All right, we're adjourned. We're going to go into the regular council meeting. So uh, welcome to the April 15th, 2020 council meeting. Uh, would the clerk please read the roll? Mr. Amrine. Here. Mr. DeLeon. Here. Ferrara. <laughs> Mr. Ferrara. Here. All right. Mr. Kuhar. Here. Ms. Rosenberg. Here. Ms. Schaefer. Here. Mr. Sidoti. Here. Mr. Turner. Here. Ms. Wallach. She is absent. Ms. Wallach is asked to be excused. Move to excuse. Motion. Uh, do I have a motion to excuse crazy? Move to excuse. Is there a second? Second. Mike, did you second? Any discussion? Yes. Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, aye. same sign. Nay. Okay, thank you. Uh, Pledge of Allegiance, Mr. Rosenberg. <clears throat> Pledge of Allegiance to the flag, to the flag of the United States of America. United States of America. The Republic. The Republic for which it stands. Under God. Indivisible. And justice for all. For all. All right. Very good. Thank you. I need a motion for approval of the minutes of the March 18th meeting. Who moved? I did. Garrett did. Who seconded it? I'll second. Mike seconded it. Any discussion? <laughs> Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, aye. same sign. All right, going to the city manager's report, Jack. Yes, I'd like to move items one through five on the city manager's report. Second. Okay. Who seconded it? I did. Heidi, any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Close, same sign. <laughs> that passes. All right, we're going to go into standing committee reports. Uh, public safety, Mr. Amorite. I'd like to move the um, action, the one action recommended. Second. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That passes. Would the clerk read draft number 2020-25 in title only? Draft number 2020-25, an ordinance authorizing the city manager or his designee to approve the sale of liquor at Fred Fuller Park for the annual Art in the Park Festival beginning being held September 12th, 2020 through <coughs> September 13th, 2020 and declaring an emergency. Move suspension. Suspension. All right, second by John Kuhar. Please call the roll for suspension. Mr. Amarine? Yes. De Leon? Mike, you're muted. Wait. Yes. <laughs> Ferrara? Yes. Kuhar? Yes. Rosenberg? Yes. Schaefer? Yes. Sidoti? Yes. Turner? Yes. Suspension passes. I need a motion for adoption. Move adoption. adoption. Second. All right. Is there any discussion on adopting this ordinance? Hearing none, please call the roll for adoption. Amarine? Yes. De Leon? Yes. Ferrara? Yes. Kuhar? Yes. Rosenberg? Yes. Schaefer? Yes. Sidoti? Yes. Turner? Yes. Ordinance 2020-25 has passed. Okay, thank you. We'll move in the streets and sidewalks. Mr. Sidoti, I need a motion for the minutes. 
Yeah, so I'd like to move the uh, committee meeting minutes and also the action that was recommended. Second. Second, Second by John Kuhar. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Passes. With the clerk read draft number 2020-26 entitled only. Draft number 2020-26, an ordinance authorizing the city manager or his designee to enter into a licensing agreement between the city of Kent and Kent Tacos LLC Barrio to install a fenced outdoor patio to expand the service at their downtown location and declaring an emergency. Move suspension. Second. Second. Please call the roll for suspension. De Leon. Yes. Ferrara. Yes. Kuhar. Yes. Rosenberg. Yes. Schaefer. Yes. Sidoti. Yes. Turner. Yes. Amarine. Yes. Suspension passes. Need a motion for. Second. Second by Mike. Uh, please call the roll for adoption if there's no comments. De Leon? Yes. Ferrara? Yes. Kuhar? Yes. Rosenberg? Yes. Schaefer? Yes. Sidoti? Yes. Turner? Yes. Amarine? Yes. Ordinance 2020 26 is passed. Okay, thank you. We'll move into community development, Mr. Ferrer. Community development. It's not me. Mr. Kuhar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's my fault. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm reading the agenda. Yeah, You're right, sorry. John. It's Kuhar. Okay. <laughs> uh, I don't have a piece of paper, but I'm going to move to the minutes and the one action. Second. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Pereira. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That passes. With the clerk read draft number 2020-27 in title only. Draft number 2020-27, an ordinance authorizing the city manager or his designee to renew the agreement with the Haymaker Farmers Market for the subland lease of a parking lot located north of Summit Street, west of Franklin Avenue, and east of Akron Barberton Cluster Railway Company's mainline track containing 0.168 acres for the period of May 2nd, 2020 through October 31st, 2020, contingent on the continuation of the city's lease with the Akron Barberton Cluster Railway Company for the amount of $1 and declaring an emergency. Move suspension. Second. Second. Please call the roll on suspension. Ferrara? Yes. Kuhar? Yes. Rosenberg? Yes. Schaefer? Yes. Sidoti? Yes. Turner? Yes. Amarine? Yes. De Leon? Yes. Okay, Move suspension adoption. passes. Need a motion for adoption. Move adoption. I think I heard Heidi. Who was the second? I second, I'll second it. Roger. Okay. Is there any discussion on the adoption of this ordinance? Hearing none, please call the roll for adoption. Ferrara? Yes. Kuhar? Yes. Rosenberg? Yes. Schaefer? Yes. Sidoti? Yes. Turner? Yes. Amrine? Yes. De Leon? Yes. Ordinance 2020 27 is passed. Okay, thank you. That's set. Finance Committee, Mr. DeLeon. Yes, I'd like to move the committee meeting minutes and the three actions recommended. Second. Second by Garrett. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Passes. With the clerk read draft number 2020-28 in title only. Draft number 2020-28, an ordinance authorizing Kent Parks and Recreation to submit an application for a 2020 Nature Works grant for $22,500 with the City of Kent matching $7,500 for a total budgeted amount of $30,000 for the renovation of the basketball court at Al Lease Park and declaring an emergency. 
Move suspension. Move suspension. Second. Second by Mike. Mr. Kuhar? The suspension passed for adoption. Need a motion? Move adoption. Second. Second by Roger. Do we do a any roll call? On do we roll call? What? <laughs> do we do do the roll call? I'm asking if there's any discussion on adoption. And we need to now back up call. and do a roll call on suspension. We need the roll call. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I miss that? All right, That's go okay. do the roll call on suspension. Mr. Kuhar? Yes. Rosenberg? Yes. Schaefer? Yes. Sidoti? Yes. Turner? Yes. Amarine? Yes. De Leon? Yes. And Ferrara? Yes. All right, now okay. suspension passed. I need a motion for adoption. <laughs> so moved. Second. Second by Mike. Any discussion on adopting this ordinance? Please call the roll on adoption. Kuhar? Yes. Rosenberg? Yes. Schaefer? Yes. Sidoti? Yes. Turner? Yes. Amarine? Yes. De Leon? Yes. Ferrara? Yes. Okay, ordinance 2020-28 has passed. Okay, thank you. Would the, would the clerk read draft number 2020-29 in title only? Draft number 2020-29, an ordinance amending ordinance number 2019-139, the current appropriation ordinance passed December 18th, 2019, so as to adjust appropriations, transfers, and advances from the various funds of the City of Kent to individual accounts for the current expenses of the City for the fiscal year ending December 31st, 2020, and declaring an emergency. Move suspension. Suspension. Second. It sounded like Garrett and John. Please call the roll on suspension. suspension. Call the roll on suspension. Sorry. Okay. Rosenberg? Yes. Schaefer? Yes. Sidoti? Yes. Turner? Yes. Amarine? Yes. De Leon? Yes. Ferrara? Yes. Kuhar. Yes. Move adoption. Second. All right. Second by Mike. Is there any discussion on adopting this ordinance? Hearing none, please call the roll for adoption. Rosenberg? Yes. Schaefer? Yes. Sidoti? Yes. Turner? Yes. Amarine? Yes. De Leon? Yes. Ferrara? Yes. Kuhar? Yes. Okay, ordinance 2020-29 has passed. Okay, thank you. Would the clerk read draft number 2020-30 in title only? Draft number 2020-30, an ordinance authorizing the city manager or his designee to accept any COVID-19 related donations during the COVID-19 <clears throat> pandemic and declaring an emergency. No suspension. Second. Second. Second by Mike. Please call the roll on suspension. Schaefer? Yes. Sidoti? Yes. Turner? Yes. Amrine? Yes. De Leon? Yes. Ferrara? Yes. Kuhar? Yes. Rosenberg? Yes. Suspension passed. Need a motion adoption. for adoption. No adoption. Second. Second by Mike. Any discussion on adopting this ordinance? Mm -hmm. Seeing none, please call the roll for adoption. Jafer? Yes. Sidoti? Yes. Turner? Yes. Amrine? Yes. De Leon? Yes. Ferrara? Yes. Parr? Yes. Rosenberg? Yes. Okay, 2020-30 has passed. Okay, that's the business for tonight. Um, Mayor, excuse me. Would yes. It, would it be appropriate to uh, put a motion on the floor at this point concerning our interviewing process? Either either we do it tonight or we're at a standstill, and I don't know how else to do it. Well, I'd like to. I'd like to, uh, due to the COVID nineteen uh, crisis and the rules that the governor has established, 
I'd like to move to suspend our consul rules for face-to-face -face interviews of candidates for boards and commissions through June 30th of this year. Is there a second? Second by Mike. Is there any discussion on that? Roger, you have more discussion? Well, I just think that, you know, it, we need to get moving on our boards and commissions. I think it'll be difficult to have, to, I mean, we can't break the rules that have been established. And I think this gives us a time frame. And in the event that uh, the sanctions are lifted by the governor and we're able to meet, then we can also lift it at that time. But I think June 30, up through June 30th, we should try to do our interviews differently, probably online like this. Okay, Mike, do you have anything? I just think it's a pretty important part to everything that's going on here. So I think we should move along with that. All right, thank you. Does anybody else have a comment? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, thank you. Is there anything else anybody, I realize I asked for comments to give them to the clerk. Is there anything else that anybody would like to say before yes. we adjourn? Yes. Who's Whenever this? That's cool. John? Everybody just keep uh, being safe and trying to show other people that it's important to be safe. There you go. I it. agree with you, John. Everybody stay safe. Stay that separation. Wear that mask out there. I think, I think our nation's into a long war yet, and uh, we're going to change society. That's for sure. If there's nothing else, no more other comments. I appreciate everybody uh, attending this meeting. Uh, we got through our first one. The next one will be easier. With that said, we're adjourned. Have a good night. Bye, guys. Bye, everybody. Bye.